Dragon Ball Z Kakarot's second DLC pack has arrived and continues where its predecessor left off, telling its own version of the Resurrection F storyline. I'm Josh from Dragon Ball University, and this is the DBU review of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot A New Power Awakens Part 2. Much like the first DLC did with Battle of Gods, this new expansion makes the Resurrection F story work within the slightly changed world of DBZ Kakarot. It starts off by addressing the elephant in the room. If you've played all of Kakarot's post-game side quests, then you already used the Dragon Balls to revive Frieza and his minions and train with them. This means that Frieza's already alive at the start of the DLC storyline, so no Sorbet, Tagama, or Frog from Chrono Trigger, but we do get to see the return of Zarbon, Dodoria, and the Ginyu Force. Thanks to the less-than-long runtime of A New Power Awakens Part 1, I had no expectations for anything different with Part 2. I was able to beat the story in 90 minutes including load times, but this one did have one major leg up on the first. It was fun. The new Horde battles are a nice twist on the battle system I've become very familiar with across a couple hundred hours playing Kakarot, and they're quite nice to look at, too. I feel like I could have easily squeezed more time out of it just by flying around and doing more Horde battles, which leads me to arguably my favorite aspect of DLC 2 over the first one. There's post-game content. After you beat the Resurrection F story, you're free to fly around the newly added Wetlands map in your Weiss training outfits and take part in Horde challenges. You can also visit Dr. Brief and replay the story portion anytime. You also get several new skills for Goku and Vegeta, which, just like Part 1, make you feel infinitely more powerful than before and permanently widens the gap between Goku, Vegeta, and the rest of the playable characters. The level cap has also been increased from 250 to 300, which is excellent for adding more playtime, but it also brings me to the most glaring downside to the entire second DLC pack. If you played the first DLC for so much as a few hours, you're going to be way too strong. With Whis's training in the Ultimate Sacred Waters from the first DLC, I brought Goku and Vegeta from level 120 to 250 in an afternoon several months ago, and Frieza caps out at level 170. This unfortunately made the battles against Frieza way too easy, albeit gorgeous to look at. But you can also see Goku and Vegeta as Super Saiyan gods in their Whis training outfits, so that was kinda cool. All in all, if you didn't hate the first DLC, chances are there's fun to be had for you in the second one. And if nothing else, it's way better than the movie ever was. 